Okay, this is the material I'm going to make the flywheel out of. I'm going to attempt to make the flywheel out of anyway. Um, we want uh, 3 inches 150, so I'm going to go 3 inches 250. So I need to take and scribe a center line on there. It's 3 inches 250, so that would be 1 inch 500, 1 inch 625. I'm just going to put a scratch mark there and there. <laughs> and then I'm going to center punch that. I'm just going to use my, my automatic center punch. My, so I can just get it. All I want is a mark for the compass to fit in. And now we get a compass out. I have a smaller one, I think. Well, this big one will work. All I could find was my big one. I know I have one that's that's a lot smaller than that, but that's okay. So now I'm just going to go from that center mark out to the edge. And we're going to lay down a scratch mark. Hopefully, get in that point. See, that's why I put a center punch mark on there. That, that reason right there. Make sure I have a good scratch mark. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw cut it this way and then saw cut it that way and then come over here in the mill and just kind of move it around and cut to, try to cut kind of to the line and then I'm gonna I'm going to use I I, <clears throat> I put together a assist on making a helper page or helper view kind of at making this whole pattern around. I'm assuming you don't have that like I don't have an indexing the only thing I have is I have a, a spindex that I could actually do it I could bore a hole in this plate clamp it to a mandrel and then go around and do those holes and that's probably what I'm going to do I'll bore a hole three-quarter inch hole through that on center and then uh, go around and put these holes in. Another way of doing it is I don't you don't even have to put a center hole in but I would. I'd put a center hole in so that I could draw um, um, put it in the four jaw and dial it in and then I would put this hole pattern in that I have. I laid out a, a hole pattern here with eighth inch diameters that are on center line of the spoke holes. So what we do is set a knee on the table and then push that up against the knee, the two pins, put two pins in, the, in two holes and then push it up against the knee, drill the hole, move the pins, drill the hole. Now I'm just trying to think of which way I want to do it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going <clears> to <throat> drill a quarter inch hole through there, through the center, put the hole pattern in, then band saw it, and 
cut close to the moving around and cut close to the line I could actually put a quarter inch pin through the center and do the same thing as I did with the cylinder and I'll have that on top of a couple parallels so that I could turn it and it would always be the same height I think that's what I'm going to do I'll put a quarter inch hole through there and then bandsaw this and uh, I'll set it on parallels and then come in with an end mill cut turn it a little bit cut turn it a little bit cut turn it a little bit cut and work my way around it before I do that though when I do the quarter inch hole I want to also do the eighth inch holes at the same time on the same setup that way I, I know they're in the right positions all right, I, I think I got my I think I got it straight in my head how I'm going to do it. First thing I'm going to do is put a quarter inch pinhole right through the center of that where the where I put that center punch mark. I'm going to move my stuff off of the mill here that I've got sitting here. And so I'm back you and I don't knock it on the floor. I'm known and noted to do that. Knock stuff on the floor. All right, it's all let's go here. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is clamp this in the vise. Hopefully, I can clamp it in the vise. I don't know. I didn't measure it. I don't know if that's going to open up far enough. <laughs> oh man, we well, you know it. About 200 thou. Well, take a vice jaw and then uh, take the movable vice jaw and then set a thinner parallel there, a hardened parallel, and then clamp it. That's kind of a bummer. It's just really nasty outside again today. It's sun is shining, it looks like a beautiful day out. That wind is blowing and it is cold. I think it was 31 degrees out. I have peas that are up. I don't know. I hope they survive. They're a cold weather crop. They uh, usually will, if they get froze off on the top, they usually come back. So I'm hoping that they'll be okay. That's, the, that's usually the first thing I plant in the garden in, in, the, in the spring. Peas and radishes. Alright, so now I'll just take and put a parallel in here. I, the reason I'm putting a parallel in here, these are hardened parallels. That way I won't make marks in my... And we need a couple parallels to put underneath. Oh, right, they're in right here. Yeah, brush this off. Be, be nice to have them kind of straight going through, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay. It now get that to the center. That one's a little loose on the back side. Take my little whacker here. That one, I can't even move it. I want to be able to move this one out of the way. It's a little loose, a little loose over there. But I want it snug too. There we go. 
All right, okie doke. Now, take and put a pointer in there. Just gonna put a pointer in the spindle here. Back you up here. Where are we at? Oh, we were looking at the, I'm going, where's the spindle at? <laughs> Uh, all right, take this out. Take this in a lot. Put that back in the drawer. And we'll get a... Basically this pointer, all it is is an end mill, broken end mill, and I ground point on it. I spun a point on it. That's a 3 -eighths. Nothing fancy. And just a... It won't have to be tight, so just hand tighten that. Bring this down. Break it up. Alright, now we'll get into this scribe line. Should be right in the center. Mark as it is. Zero. Go back to absolute. It's still an incremental. Zero. Everything. Now, put a half inch column in there. Put a real chuck in. kind of messed up when I cut rubber for my um, shields in the back. I should have I should have made it go up to the top here. Instead I didn't. <laughs> so it's a little Oop, God darn it. I'm not having a good day here. Alright, bend that. Try to keep some of the chips off the way either anyway. Especially when they're just steel chips. Alright. So we're zeroed. Are you in the shot? Yeah, kinda. So and so now what we're going to do is we're going to drill center hole, then we're going to go move up, drill an eighth inch hole, move over, drill an eighth inch hole, move down here, drill an eighth inch hole over there. Just draw our eighth inch holes all the way around. And then I'll go and bandsaw it. So the first one is going to be a is going to be a quarter inch hole. Get my center drill out. Well, for the quarter inch, then I'll go back to a smaller center drill for the. I'll go back to a smaller center drill for the uh, eighth inch holes. Okay. This is 
half inch thick plate. And I want to finish around 3 A's. Uh, it doesn't have to be 3 A's, it can be smaller or bigger. As long as I put the spoke holes in the center of it. So, we're going to drill that 234 and then we're going to ream it. Slip fit of uh, 250, so I'm going to 50 and a half if I can find it. I know I have one. Got a 249. Two forty-nine five, getting closer. <laughs> Why is it that you, you can never find? Well, here's a here's a quarter inch. I hope it'll ream just a little over. And shift the roll in a little while. room here. <laughs> so now we want to go back to that uh, smaller center drill which I have still laying here. Put the bigger one away. And we want to drill eighth inch holes. And I'm going to probably Double drill holes also. Or drill and ream them, I should say. Uh, we'll leave about nine thousandths for. Now I'm going to get an eighth inch reamer. And again, I'd like to have 125 and a half, 127, one twenty-four five. I got 125 even, so Hopefully that'll work. Oh, I don't need that yet. I need the center drill first. And we need to shift back high. And we want to move to our first dimension. We'll go to that help page. And it's one inch. Get the dimension. Two and a half. All right, there's the dimension on Y. Now X. And we'll move. We'll move over to that one first. Close it. 
594. Right there. All right, that's the first one. And move this parallel. I told you if it fits snug. These holes will be gone when the rim gets gets cut, so not to worry. They won't be there. At least that's the plan anyway. six of them, six holes, six, six spokes, six holes. So now we move over to this side. Sure like my readout. <laughs> I'm telling you. I thought that I was one that yeah, I don't need to read out. And once I got it and I'm using it now, yeah. It's like the old days at the shop. Because <laughs> all the machines out there, they had naturally they had readouts. There was no no reading the dials out there.
that's it. Okay, that's it for the holes on the sides. So, actually, I could keep the reamer and drill out because we're going to be using that again. All right, so now what I want to do is go bandsaw that off. Just amp, amp. So I will come back once I get that bandsawed. So I can still see my scratch marks, but I know what, what, what's. So I'll probably just bandsaw it off all the way like that, and then turn around and just bandsaw that off, and I'll have this chunk over here that's kind of a waste. But or I could go this way. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll do that because that way these holes and stuff are out in the piece that's going to be waste, kind of a scrap piece. And then I'll have a bar here that's whatever thickness. Thinking ahead of trying not to waste any material. <laughs> Getting the habit of doing that. So anyway, I'll be back once I get it all bandsawed out.